Netvault can only work with a firewall if you've set the port ranges on the Netvault configurator. This has to be done on both the client and the server. So you're going to open the Netvault configurator and go to the firewall tab. And in the firewall tab, you'll see the entries to put your, your firewall port ranges. Here's an example of the calculations you need to, to create firewall port ranges for your environment. The recommendation is, for example, if you have five clients with two plugins on each client that you're backing up, and you have 10 drives that can be a combination of virtual tape library drives or physical drives, then you'd want to use seven ports per client, or five clients times seven ports is 35 ports. And then for each drive, you want another four ports open. So that's 10 drives times four ports is 40. So a total of 75 ports open. And now we'll go to NetVault in the configurator and I'll show you where you'd enter that. So here's the NetVault configurator and we want the firewall tab. So in this example, NetVault always starts with port 20031. So you need to start with that port for the start of your range. In this case, we'll go from 20031 to 20061. All you have to do, once you've got your port range calculated, copy and paste that to each of the entries, except for the two NDMP entries. NDMP uses um, port 10,000. It starts at port 10,000. So if you're backing up through NDMP, um, you want to enter the same number of ports, so four ports per drive and seven ports per client, um, and open port ranges starting with 10,000. In this case, this case we're just doing regular plugins and um, file system plugin. So you also want to use this last entry, valid connect ports for inner machine connection setup. And you want to make sure that the same port ranges are open on all the clients and of course on your third party firewall. You want to make sure that the port range is consistent from each client, the NetVault server, and the actual firewall itself. So you want to make sure you hit apply. And then in order for any changes or c to configuration on the firewall, you need to stop and restart the service. So you would stop the service. Close the GUI and then restart the service. Okay, and then the other part of this, in order to make sure it's going to be applied, is from the GUI we go to client management. From client management, you can configure the firewall settings on any of your clients. For example, if you right click and you select configure, you can access the firewall tab here and you can enter the same port ranges as you did on the server. 20031 to 20061. And again, copy and paste that for all of the settings. And you can hit apply. The one thing you can't do with the, the remote configurator on the clients is you can't restart the services. So you'll actually have to log on to the client to restart the services um, on each client. So the other thing you have to remember to do is right click on the client and select outside firewall to designate that machine as being outside the firewall that's when it will actually look at the firewall configuration and use that port range. If you notice, the keyboard on the icon turned from green to white. That's a visual clue that tells you just by looking at the, the GUI which ones are set to outside firewall and which ones are set to inside firewall. So if it's a green keyboard on the icon, 
that means it's inside the firewall. And if it's white, that means it's set to outside the firewall. So that concludes the video solution for setting NetVault firewall port ranges for NetVault Backup. To learn more about NetVault Backup, visit quest.com slash netvault-backup. For more video solutions, visit quest.com support.